are talking about the short documentary, The Great Connector, the story of the, the Lawrence Hopewell Trail. And here to talk to us about it is the director of the documentary, Tom Benty. Tom, thank you so much for joining us and congratulations on making the documentary and getting accepted. Oh, thank you, Sophia. Yeah, it's such an honor always to screen at Garden State. I love coming every year as a spectator, as a filmmaker. It's such a such a great time, and I'm really happy and proud to be a part of it once again in 2023. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so proud that you keep submitting to Garden State Film Festival and that you keep making awesome films. Congrats to you. I'm honored I get to interview today about this documentary. Let's get it started by you telling everybody a little bit about The Great Connector. Sure. So I'm someone who's very much a part of the outdoor community in New Jersey. Uh, I've made films about the Jersey Shore. I've made documentaries about sailing clubs in New Jersey. But I also have a love and passion for a little bit inland in New Jersey. And um, I'm a big bike rider, both uh, road cycling and also on trails. And uh, the Lawrence Hopewell Trail is a, is a beautiful trail in Mercer County connecting Lawrence and Hopewell townships. And I've been riding it for a few years and I looked into the history of it and I thought it was very interesting how in the early 2000s, these executives from Bristol Myers Squibb and from uh, Edison uh, Educational Testing Services came together and they worked with local communities as part of corporate outreach. And they created this beautiful 20 mile plus trail that is still ongoing and there's still more to add. Uh, but I just thought it was just such a, a great thing about how corporations can come together working with the local communities at the at the local level to create something wonderful that I take advantage of that millions and millions of people take advantage of in locally and also people come from all around to really experience this trail. And when you think of New Jersey, I mean, people that live here know that there's a lot more to it than just highways and uh, refineries, but a lot of people don't really know the beauty of the nature here in New Jersey. And uh, this trail really exemplifies that. And I wanted to tell the story. I wanted to interview the people that were a part of it, um, uh, people at the state level, people at the, the, the county level and at the, the town level and how they came together to create this trail. And I also wanted to showcase which highlights in the in the documentary as well, like all the people that are taking advantage of it. So you have uh, individuals commuting to work via bike on the trail. You have people that are just, are just experiencing it uh, for the nature benefits. And it's a big part of their lives. And I, I thought, what a, what a wonderful story to tell. And um, I, I think I did a really good job of, of showcasing what it means to the community and how everything came together. You absolutely did. It is a wonderful story to tell. And I'm so, I love hearing that you are a lover of this trail. You bike ride it. We see in the documentary, you you on the trail riding. It is just so amazing. And I love that it's filmed in New Jersey, the trails in New Jersey. You get to see some of the beautiful nature that Jersey has to offer. So I want to ask you, when you first thought, let me see the research and the history behind this trail. Did you know you wanted to make a documentary or it wasn't until after gathering in this information that you were like, this would be a good documentary? Not necessarily. I mean, I'm always looking for cool stories to tell, especially stories that I'm passionate about. Um, and I, I wanted to tell a story about nature in New Jersey, but I didn't know the specifics of this trail. And when I found out how it came to be and how these corporations came to be, I was really interested. And I wanted to highlight the people and, and make it a testament to all the, the great people all, all these years later that are still working together to really uh, highlight uh, community benefits and be a part of this great community. When did that happen? What year did you first decide to start making this documentary and how long did it take to put together? So I started in 2019, I think in the fall, so kind of right before the pandemic. And um, we did a bunch of interviews, I think in November, down by the trail. And then uh, obviously the world went upside down. And then it was, I think in December of 2020, I got I think some of the final interviews. And then during that time, I think in October, 2020, that's when I did a lot of the biking stuff. And I have some cool GoPro footage and some cell phone footage to kind of give it uh, uh, the, the, the documentary, a, a little bit of a narrative tone to it to showcase like one person's experience of, of riding the trail and how it, it all connects to all the people involved with creating it. Wow. Well, it's nice to know that the pandemic didn't hinder any of the of this documentary process and you kept fighting through it. <laughs> so you have a you have interviewed a lot of people in this documentary, presidents, co-presidents, the mayor of the townships, 
people who love the trail just like you. How did you know who to interview? How did that all come together? Well, I started with the people that founded the trail, Miss uh, Becky Taylor, who was working at Bristol Myers at the time, and Miss Eleanor Horn, who's also featured in the documentary. They're, they're, they're really the two people that founded the trail. And she was working at Educational Testing Services. And once I had an initial meeting with uh, those two individuals, uh, that's when everything kind of came into place. And they were really uh, very happy to meet for me to tell this story. And they they were very open and they, 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 they pointed me in the right direction. And I've been working with them throughout the editing process to make sure that I was highlighting the trail uh, the best way that I possibly could. And, and that it really reflected um, the greatness of the trail and all the people that were involved with it. Wow. And you also have some lovers of the trail as well. Were you just like, sitting on the trail waiting for people to come and stopping them asking them to be interviewed or how, how did that happen no that was all pre-planned so i i contacted uh becky and eleanor and they got me in touch with all the individuals that were highlighted in the trail oh amazing so i want to talk to you about you as a as a filmmaker and a director you've made many films in the past we know you at garden state film festival uh first question for you is why do you love telling stories and and what stories do you like to tell Oh man, I, yeah, I just I love telling stories. I mean, it, uh, Sophia, you know, I mean, it, it it showcases the human condition. It showcases humanity. It showcases what it is to be a, a person of on this the crazy connection. planet. It no brings people intended. together. Exactly, right. exactly. I mean, it's it's who we are as as people, as human beings, as as emotional creatures, as spiritual creatures, as physical creatures. I mean, this is who we are. So to tell stories, we learn about the human condition. And that's what I'm passionate about. And that's why I continue to do what I do, because it's never ending, right? You can never mm -hmm. learn enough about that condition. It's always expanding. I mean, that's what art is. Oh, I love it. I, I love the passion I'm feeling hearing you talk about filmmaking. And you have made regular narrative films as well as documentary. This is not your first documentary that you've you've directed, correct? No, no, I made a, uh, the year before I made one, uh, like I love the Jersey Shore, that's my heart and soul. Every summer I'm in Seaside, as most of the people that know me know. So uh, there's a Seaside Park Yacht Club and that started in 1899. And I told that story as well. And it's on my YouTube channel if you wanted to check it out. I didn't do the festival circuit because it was during the pandemic when it, I think it was finished and I just, I just wanted to put it online. And that got also a great reception as well. People were really um, just so happy that I told that story and, and people, people that love the shore, I mean, they know what oh, I'm yeah. talking about and it's just part of your DNA. And I highlighted that story in that documentary and people continually message me, come up to me when I'm at the shore and they're like, I saw that you really captured the essence of what it means to be someone who spends their summer at the shore and who spends their summer at the Seaside Park Yacht Club. So uh, that's another great doc you can check out on my YouTube channel, Tom Benti Media. Wow. Okay. Thank you. I was going to ask you to shout out that YouTube channel so we can check that out. And everybody loves the Jersey Shore. It's such a huge part of Jersey. So I, I love that you made that. And just what have you learned making these projects, making these documentaries as a filmmaker and director yourself? What's some advice you can give to other people who might want to make these projects? I think just be open and just be curious. Don't necessarily let... Um you know, uh, hindrances get in your way. Like there's a lot you can do for, for very little. I mean, this, this documentary didn't cost me. I mean, edited it myself. So there was really very little cost involved except for the time. And I guess going to the places, but just, just be open, be curious, have a passion for, for anything and, and tell those stories. Like you, like Sophia, you said, I mean, you have to have the passion to be able to tell a great story and, and, and find out what your passion is. And then that will lead you in the right direction. Right. And telling stories that you love. You're telling stories that are so close to you. And I think that's why they're they're the way they are, because you can feel that love and feel that passion. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. And, and and during these process, you know, we, we put on the news, you see so much horror and not that like every you know, every there's oh, there's good stories to be told. There's bad stories to be told. But what I learned from this documentary and from the other one I made from Seaside is that there are a lot of great people out there. There's a lot of great stories to be told. And I wanted to highlight that and showcase it to a wide audience. Mm. So when it comes to this documentary, The Great Connector, what would you say the most challenging part of the process was? Uh, the most challenging part, uh, you know, obviously the pandemic. So that was a huge right. time gap. So there was a lot of time that went went by. Also, I think just you know, when you, when you have, when you set out, like, I want to tell this story about the, the Lawrence Hopewell trail, it's like, well, 
you know, you, you read stuff online, the basic synopsis is online, but how do you want to go about it? So I think with any documentary, it comes together in the editing room and that requires a, a lot of time where you're going through the footage and you're highlighting, well, okay, so now they're talking about kind of the inception. Now they're talking about the benefits. So you have to organize that and then put it together in a cohesive fashion so that there is a narrative, but it can't seem too stringent and has to kind of connect. So that's that's the challenge is right. making it, taking all this footage, taking all these different excerpts and and really molding it into something that tells a cohesive story that is is fluid and that is free flowing, that doesn't feel like it's too forced. It has to feel mm -hmm. natural. And I think that's yeah. the challenge with any documentary. Yeah, I can imagine that would be a challenge making that story, but also cutting down those interviews because I'm sure exactly. they're much longer than what we see in the documentary. Exactly, yeah, just cutting it down working wow. with Eleanor and Becky to make sure that they understand or they're on the same page with me in, 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 in terms of what I think is the most viable. So it, yeah, that's, that's what, that's where the time comes in is where you're going through the footage and really making sure you're getting whatever needs to be told in a way that makes the most sense and is most creatively appealing. Right. And how long did that editing process take? Uh, that, you know, that was a few months. I, you know, I'm pretty good with how I film and edit. So I, once I film, like I, I, I don't just kind of leave it there. I go through the footage and I organize everything. Mm -hmm. So when it does just like a, when writing as well, like, you know, I, I, I write the outline and once I have the outline, I go and I facilitate that. So as soon as I'm filming, I'm, I'm getting that footage, I'm organizing it. And then once I have an idea of where everything needs to be, I just put it all together, but it was definitely, uh, several months for sure. I mean, the, the process mm -hmm. I started in 2019 and then this didn't finish till I guess almost like last year, 2022. So it was, uh, you know, a few years there, a good three years. Right. So Tom, you are an actor yourself. You mm -hmm. write, you direct, you edit. Do you have any uh, favorite roles? Not not acting roles, like any of those roles that, that, you, oh, okay. that you play. Yeah. What's your favorite hat to wear? I mean, I love acting. Yeah, I mean, I love it all, Sophia. I mean, I, I really love it all. There's not one part that I love more. I love telling stories. I love being, being part of the story. I love I love acting for sure. I mean, that's that's a whole lot of fun. Um, so I, I I can't really say that there's one that I like more than than the other. I like it all. Okay, I love it. And we hear in the documentary some people's favorite parts about the trail and what do they love about the trail. And you mentioned a little bit, but I would love to shout it out again. What's your what's your favorite thing about the Lawrence Hopewell Trail? Why do you keep writing it? What do you love about it? Uh, the, pr my favorite section of the trail, and they talk about it a lot in the documentary, is Mercer Meadows. It's just this beautiful area that the trail goes through, and it has a lot of uh, just beautiful flowers, and it, it's really something something special. And what I'm really hoping with these documentaries that I produce, uh, specifically about the Lawrence Hopewell Trail, is it shows people like, hey, you know, you, you hear people, they say, oh, you know, there's nothing to do or I'm so bored. Like, get out there. There's there's a lot to do. Like, you just have to, to experience it. And, you know, it doesn't even cost much money. Like, this is a free trail that you can just enjoy and all the benefits that you're going to get from it. Health benefits, emotional benefits, just, to, you know, just feeling uh, a sense of peace and a sense of calm that really only comes with being outside and also the community involvement of being a part of this community that enjoys nature is, is huge. So uh, just, I really hope this inspires people in New Jersey. If you're not familiar with the trail and outside of New Jersey to just, just get out there and do something right. You know, you just definitely be a, inspired yeah. me. <laughs> I'm, I was born in Jersey, raised in Jersey, Jersey, still live in Jersey. And I love hiking me and my sister. And I don't think I've ever been to this trail. And I didn't know how big it was. You showed the map in the documentary. Like, I'm going to, I'm definitely hitting up this trail. Yeah, it's over 20 miles. It's a great biking trail. It's a great walking trail. And it connects with other trails as well. So the DNR Canal is another trail that I really love riding on as well. And it, the trail connects. So it's that's why it's the great connector. It connects people, connects communities. It connects you to nature. It really just brings everything together. And I, I highly recommend anyone out there to take advantage of it really any time of the year, even in the winter, um, to just experience nature and to experience what, what, what we have to offer here in New Jersey. Oh, I love that. What a perfect way to end this off. Cause I have one more question for you before we hop off, but it's like, it really is the great connector. This film is, that's what the documentary is called. It trail itself and film in general is, it's a great connector. So shout out to your title. I mean, great title. Oh, <laughs> Before we jump off, I would love to hear why you keep submitting and coming back to Garden State Film Festival. This is not your first time. What do you love about the festival and how does it feel to have the great connector screen here this year? 
Oh man, man, I've been I've been coming to the to the Garden State Film Festival since 2004. I think was the first year I came. Wow. So I am, I am OG. I, OG, oh OG all the <laughs> way, man. And I remember being in that Paramount Theater back in 2004 and, and watching these really cool independent th films and obviously it was a completely different landscape than it is now so it was it was like you know to, to have an independent film back then was like was was something different it was something very unique like now we all have access to making films but that back then it was obviously something different but i remember watching these films back then and just thinking wow if i could if i could create something if i could you know be a part of this community of filmmakers here in new jersey and and then you know years later they have my first feature film at the Jersey Shore screen in 2012 at the Garden State wow. Film Festival. And then all these other films, Flat Brim in 2015. I had a commercial in, I think in 2019 about the the Forum Theater in Metuchen. Um, uh, you know all these films throughout the years and and just as a spectator and as um, a filmmaker, it's such an honor to be a part of this community. Uh, you know it's always on my calendar every March. I'm going to Asbury Park. I'm watching cool films. I'm reconnecting with all these great filmmakers. It's 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 such a a great yearly tradition, and uh, just to to be a part of it for all these years and see how it's evolved, but yet stay true to its roots of being a really New Jersey film festival is is so inspiring. And I I can't tell you just how um, lucky and blessed I feel to be a part of it once again. And I, I really continue to go and I hope to for many, many years to come because it, it's such a great festival. You see so many great films and you get to meet all these cool people and reconnect with people maybe you haven't seen in, in a while. And, yeah. and it's about collaboration and, and creating more work and, and it's the community, just like this, this film is about the community, the Garden State Film Festival, obviously, as you know, is a, is a big community and I'm really proud to be a part of it. Wow, what a pleasure hearing you say all of that and to interview today, to hear that you first came as just an audience member inspired to make a film and look at where you are now. I'm so honored that Garden State Film Festival got to be a little bit of that inspiration for you and, and that you keep coming back and making these wonderful projects. So thank you so much for making The Great Connector, bringing it to Garden State Film Festival. Let me tell everybody how they can see this documentary. It will be screening Sunday, March 26th in the Asbury Hotel and Asbury Hall in the film block, 12.15 to 2.30 p.m. So definitely check it out. We know Tom's going to be there. So come meet Tom and um, have a great time at the festival. Tom, I'll definitely see you there. Thank you so much again for taking see time you. to talk to us. Thanks so much, Sophia. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll see you at the festival.